Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, where some of us are King of the Apes and some of us ape the king. Me host, Matt Presents, joined as always by me white ape co-host. Hello, my name is Georgina of the Jungle, but you can call me Mackle if you really want to. And today we've got a wonderful matchup of some Tarzan movies that said, what if we just focused on a sexy woman the whole time? Yeah. Tarzan focuses on a sexy man for a really long time. This is true, right? I, I mean, it, like, it's, it's really easy to, like, slot a hot woman into, I think. I think because we've got both sides of it today, right? Yeah. We, we've got, uh, of course, Tarzan the Ape Man from 1981, um, starring Miss Bo Derek, And on the other side, we've got Sheena from 1984, starring uh, Miss Tanya Roberts. So you, you, we've got one movie here where Tarzan is the sexy woman and another movie where they focus on Jane, the sexy woman that's already in the story. Yes. Um, would you like to get into it? Absolutely. All right. So to start us off, we've got Tarzan, the Ape Man from 1981. That is not the only Tarzan movie called that. <laughs> there was one from like 1931, I want to say. The, uh, 1932, excuse me. Uh, Tarzan, this Tarzan the Ape Man, released in 1981, was directed by one Mr. John Derrick. Now, the relevant context here is that John Derrick was previously an actor who, uh, as he got older, married the young sex starlet Bo Derrick, who was, like, 20, 30 years younger than he was. He mostly just made movies about how hot she was. <laughs> um, and that's where Tarzan the Ape Man finds itself. The story of Mrs. Jane Parker, the, uh, lady in the Tarzan story, traveling into the jungle to confront her abandonee father. So it's somewhat of an abandon- it's, it's somewhat abandonee father. And, uh, along the way she hears about this mysterious ape man, Tarzan, who appears 45 minutes into the film. Uh, it- the- <laughs> Tarzan gets so little focus in this movie. It is all about Jane. It is all about Jane mostly hanging a a around with her bastard father who who kind of feels like he's maybe supposed to be a stand-in for, for John Derrick, which is weird that you would make your wife your self-insert's daughter. But uh, here we are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Tarzan has to save Jane from... The scrapes she gets into in the jungle. Yeah. Michael, what'd you think of this movie? Uh, this movie sucks. <laughs> I, I I thought, like, there, during, like, the first, like, 40 minutes of it, I thought it was, like, okay, this is somewhere, like, on the middle of the list. Uh, where it's kind of like, uh, you know, the it wasn't great, but there was some cool scenery. You know, it's a movie that's using, actually using animals, which is entertaining to watch. I like seeing animals in movies. Um, I like at older movies too, like they didn't CG the animals, so it's it's always kind of fun to watch that. There's just something inherently fun about looking at animals, I guess. But um and also like the father character, while I wouldn't call him a good character, I would say that Richard Harris was given it his all because the character at least had personality. It was at least kind of intriguing to see. There was some unintentionally hilarious moments in this movie with him, especially my favorite scene being the rope scene. Um, I, I remember, like, when we were watching that, like, Mitzi just, like, fucking lost it when that happened, and I was right there with them, because that was just, that was, <laughs> oh, man, that that was, like, so obviously gonna happen, and he was acting like it was so shocking and devastating, like, it was just, like, why did you send that many people over on the same rope, like, why did, when you made it up to the top, why didn't you check the rope to see if it was still, like, able to carry people, but, I, I kind of called it when we were watching the movie. I said, I guarantee you once Tarzan shows up, it's going to kill the pace of the movie entirely. And it so does. It so <laughs> the movie just drags on at that point. It became so unbelievably boring. And I think the climax is some of the worst stuff I've ever seen. Like I, they're trying to build this like emotional, like scene between the father and the daughter and it is not done well at all. It is like, one of the worst scenes I've ever seen, but it, like not too like earlier in the movie, not too much earlier. There's also a scene with like Tarzan being like in the water 
and it has like the most dog shit edit in I've ever seen in a movie ever. And it's not the whole movie is like that. It's not the entire movie is the worst edited thing ever. Just that one scene goes on for such a long time. It's bringing so much attention to itself. And it's just like one of the biggest misses I've ever seen. Uh, what do you think of this movie, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you are cocked and loaded with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, this movie's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. I The opening is certainly more interesting before Tarzan arrives, but uh, even even after Tarzan arrives, like that does that does kill the pace. But it's even before that; it's pretty boring. I, I it wasn't there's, great. There's very little of this movie I like. Mostly, it is all down to uh, Mr. Richard Harris. Be- best best thing about the movie. Uh, occasionally you'll get a laugh out of one of the other characters, usually at their expense. Right. Bo Derek is not a particularly talented actress. No. I I forget her entirely. Like I she she really didn't do anything for me at all in this. Uh not even what she was supposed to do cuz you like you said it's just the director like made movies about how beautiful she was and I'm not saying she's like a a bad looking person or anything. I'm just like I'm getting nothing from this. Like, this is just not working. Um, I mean, his wife is hot. He's got a point with that one. But, I mean, <laughs> you get that pretty quick. It's like, yeah, okay, yep. yep. I just... Why did I, you have to write a whole Tarzan movie for that? <laughs> right. I just, like... I don't understand why people are so, like... Make what you want to make, sure. But also, like, why do you... Just make a porn if that's what you want to do. Why, why do you need to have this big narrative around it? <laughs> you know what this movie reminds me of? What? The adult film series Emmanuel. Emmanuel was this sort of, uh, you know, free spirited, oh, I'm gonna go around the world and fuck whoever type of gal who uh-huh. uh, appeared in a lot of like. X-rated movies. It's a little softer than most pornography, but uh, you know, it's still very much it's 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 borderline porn. It's borderline porn. Tarzan the Ape Man feels like they they decided to just take like one part of that, like one setup to the sex scene in a, an Emmanuel movie and make it the whole movie. Right. It 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 feels like a porn parody. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah, it absolutely does. Like it, it's so fucking. Just listening to our Bo Derek and Tarzan talk, it's like it feels like you're watching a porn, right? It feels like you're watching the scene, like the beginning of a porn, right? It, it, they do <laughs> yeah. not speak naturally to one another. Um, I mean, Tarzan doesn't speak at all in this movie. In fact, does he speak at any point? I don't even know if he even does by the end of it. I think he tries I, to at the end. Which, I mean, I, th- I think for that, I kind of I, I kind of appreciate that in some ways. Uh-huh. But, uh, I mean, at the same time, so much of the movie is focused on him. Yeah, I mean, honest to God, having a silent protagonist, like, main character is not a bad thing if you do it well. Like, uh, we, we, I would we, we, not call, I would not call Tarzan the main character. You're right, you're right. I mean, pro- <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess protagonist does refer to main character. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a, a, a lead in the movie is silent. The titular character is silent. Yeah. <laughs> the titular showing up nearly an hour into the movie character is silent. I don't know, to some degree, it, it, it keeps the focus on Jane. It's like, yeah, no, this is just Jane's movie. But at the same time, like, we spend so much time with him, it's like, okay, maybe he could, like, do something? He, what are you talking about? He ran to save Jane for a really long time at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> It, it reminded me of that scene from Monty Python where he just keeps teleporting, like, like every shot he's in this, he's the same distance away from the castle. Occasionally he'll be a little further away from it, like they use the wrong take or something. <laughs> like, the problem, the problem in this movie is it's just him in the jungle and it's like, I have no context for how close that is to Jane. And, and not only is it like they shot those scenes in the jungle, a lot of those scenes were like, needlessly close up on him. Like, you couldn't even tell what his surrounding was. 
Yeah, no, like, is he getting closer? Is he running around camp? Does he know where he's going? How does he know where he's going? <laughs> I did want to say something about Richard Harris uh, or as James Parker in this. Because um, I do think he's the most entertaining part of the movie. I still don't think it's a good character at all. I think it's a completely miscommunicated character. Both in the sense that he's supposed to be seen as a good guy by the end of it. And I don't think... If you want to make like a, 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 a parent who abandoned their kid sympathetic, it's been done before. It's, uh, it's not necessarily an easy thing to do, but it has been done before. Sometimes they give the parent, you know, either a good reason or they show that they're really remorseful for it. In this case, they're trying to go down the, he doesn't really regret it, but at the same time, he, I don't know, he loves his daughter, but he does not regret staying away from his family. <laughs> no, this was absolutely worth it. Uh, but also, <laughs> it's, the the way he talks about his daughter is weird. <laughs> That's what that's what I'm saying. He feels like John Derrick. Yeah. But it's his daughter in the movie. Yeah, it, it's it, he's talking about his daughter because he's saying she looks just like his, um, her mother. And we're in a lot of movies that'll kind of be used as like more of a charming line. You know, like, oh, you look just like your mother. No, he seems like he's getting off on that fact. <laughs> like he, <laughs> he keeps comment on her beauty like a creepy person. Like, if you added some heavy breathing in there, that'd be perfect. No, um, that was, yeah, that was weird. That was something that I do not, like, I, I, Richard, it's, that's not a critique against Richard Harris. I think he was trying, and I think he did good with what was given to him. He plays a really eccentric character well, but the dialogue for him and the character they wrote was dog shit. Oh, God, go. John Derrick cannot write dialogue for shit. It is the most asinine stuff. Yeah, like, what else has Richard Harris been in? Because I swear I recognize him. Oh, Harry Potter. He's like the teacher in that. Or one of the... Yes, yes. Uh, Richard Harris was uh, Dumbledore in the first two movies. That's You even mentioned that when we were watching, yeah. He's, he's the one that had to be replaced. Yeah. He was also an Unforgiven... Oh yeah, that that's probably what I recognize him from. Uh, I I never saw the Harry Potter movies. I just there's images from Harry Potter that are like, iconic, but Unforgiven I've seen. Not my favorite. Oh, neither of us watched the Harry Potter movies. What the fuck? It's just I don't know. I wasn't into like those like I've only seen the first Lord of the Rings. I'm just I wasn't into like those big like franchise movies. Like I don't know. It took me Lord forever to Rings, watch Star Wars. What were you about? Lord of the Rings, I, I, I really enjoy. I love uh, the first one, I just never watched the I, other two. <laughs> here's the thing, I've I've seen the first Harry Potter movie, I enjoyed it a lot. I saw the second, third, and maybe the fourth one in German. My German teacher would put on the German dub of the movie, and then like put on English subtitles so we could like learn German better. But uh, I've never seen past the first one in English. <laughs> The yeah. first one was good. I enjoyed the first one. Do you want to talk about anyone else in the cast? Uh, yes. I want to talk about Miles O'Keefe as Tarzan. Because he is in things. He's like a really famous, like, B-movie dude. He showed up in, like, this uh, sort of Conan cash-in Swords and Sandals. He was in, like, a lot of Swords and Sandals stuff. He was an Ator the Flying Eagle, I think is probably what he's best known for. He was just this, like, beefy dude who'd show up in cheesy movies. Uh, like Tarzan the Ape Man. Yeah, he's like... He's a good choice. Yeah. If you just want, like, a buff dude. Yeah, he's, he's like a buff dude. That's that's clearly what they were going for. Hey, give this movie credit. They were being shallow but with both their male and female lead, <laughs> alright? The, the other one we're going to talk about that only did it with their female lead. True enough. True enough. I... <laughs> Listen, I don't want to say John Derrick wants to get cucked, but he made a movie about, like, if he died and then his wife was gonna, like, sleep with a bunch of dudes to find the right one to, like, put his soul into. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie. <laughs> Donald Trump makes a cameo. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that's why he got into filmmaking. God, I people do let fetishes control their lives. 
I, I, I might do, like, a John Derrick-centric episode. Like, Ghost Can't Do It versus Bolero. <laughs> hey. Because <laughs> those are, like, crazy. I think that I will have a bad time watching them, but I think <laughs> that... <laughs> there, there. This is at least an interesting movie to talk about. There is like, there's not like nothing to say. Both of those, I think, are more entertaining than Tarzan the Ape Man because okay. they were like way hornier. <laughs> like this one, this one kind of kept it contained. Like, right? She's like out in the ocean naked. Okay, and then okay, Tarzan is here, so of course she's gonna be naked for Tarzan. Those other two movies are way more horny. <laughs> Ghosts Can't Do It is like... I don't even know if I like that movie or not. It's it's so disorienting. It's so bizarre. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for whatever, as always. Because it's... Possible it's like so... Possible parap. It's the most transparent John Derrick has ever been with like, <laughs> This is me and my wife. <laughs> this is a story about me and my hot wife. <laughs> and what if I died and my hot wife was sad, so she found a hot guy to put my soul in. He, his final movie was uh, <laughs> was two hours of her mourning his death. <laughs> he actually... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I only learned, like, during the recording of this episode that he actually did pass away, so it's not, it's not a jab at him in that regard. It's just... Uh, <laughs> I mean, he just was going like, off of what you said. What he was a really old dude. He he died uh, in like ninety eight. <laughs> oh, yeah, he did die in ninety eight. How old was he? Because I looked I looked him up and uh, I only saw pictures of a younger looking person, but they're probably old pictures. Probably like in his seventies. Okay, he was born in the twenties. That's a decent seventy one. All right, that's a little young, but not too young. What what else? Okay, there. Who else? I mean, there's uh. There's Bo Derek. I mean, we talked about her a little bit. Um, not very memorable. I don't remember it being like, like god awful or annoying. But I don't really remember it. Is the thing I don't remember her in this movie. I think she's a blank slate. Yeah. And I think that the only, only thing I do remember is there are scenes in the movie where she has like real crazy eyes. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, I mean, it was the eighties. Yeah, she could have been on something. Yeah. Or maybe she just has, like, that deer-in-the-headlights look. I've met a lot of people with crazy eyes who are really nice people. Um, it's just that it's just a look that you give where your eyes are wide open and you don't blink. Like, <laughs> I've, met, I've met a lot of people with that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, she's not, like, if we talk about other movies that we've talked about that are similar to this, like Barb Wire and Tank Girl, they definitely had better leads. Pamela Anderson was better than her, I would say. Probably, but I do, I, I, I think the two are, like, in a very similar vein. It's like, yeah, you, you're getting cast because you're hot, not because you can act. Girl and Tank Girl, uh, person who played Tank Girl, I just liked that. I enjoyed Tank Girl, I'll, I'll stand by that. Yeah. It's, a stu it's stupid, but I enjoyed it. Is there anyone else worth mentioning? There were other characters, but, like, so what? Like, <laughs> what did they really, did anyone else bring anything to this movie? There's, like, this... Uh, the dogs. Dogs, yeah. Dogs are cool. The lion was cool. I like both these movies. I had lions. It was, I think that, uh, I like Sheena's use of the lions a lot more. I agree. But the lion in this movie, that was, you know, still pretty, like... I, I, that scene almost made me think maybe Tarzan won't be so bad, because it's a very, like, intimidating scene right away, right off the bat. There's a fucking lion stalking her on the beach, and Tarzan comes in and calms the lion down. But then it's just like that's the only like even remotely interesting thing with a scene involving Tarzan. And I think it legitimately is just because there was a lion on the screen. <laughs> uh, it's like going to the zoo. Like, hey, look at the lions. There's other animals, right? Yeah, there's some monkeys. There's definitely some monkeys. He has like a, a friend who's a monkey. You see him and Jane with the monkey at the end. Yeah, the credits are them chilling with the monkey. Yes. This movie went for a very different ending, too, of what, than what Sheena did. They just, like, J Jane and Tarzan just live happily ever, ever in the jungle. I mean, that's, that's generally how the story of Tarzan and Jane goes. Right, right. I get, I, and, J and Sheena's not really necessarily just 
Tarzan. I mean, it's close, but Sheena goes for more of the uh, sad ending. It's going for a real uh, uh, Casablanca. It's going for a real Casablanca airplane scene at the end. Uh, <laughs> well, with Casablanca, he was sending her with, like, the man she actually loved. In in Sheena, he's just kind of like, no, you gotta stay here to protect the jungle, right? The jungle is her lover in this context. Yeah, he... They... What, what happened in Sheena is they had sex and he lost interest. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about Sheena? <laughs> Should we move on to Sheena? Sure. It, it, was not, it was not as sincere of a romance as, as, he, as he believed it was. Yeah, Sheena was a movie directed by John Gil... Gil how do you pronounce that last name? Gillerman? 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 I'll go with Gillerman. John Gillerman. It was released in 1984. It fall. It opens up two geologists explore, uh, basically travel into this plan, uh, this place that, like, that is believed to be able to heal people. It's like the healing earth, where if people are buried within their, like, sand or dirt there, any thing like wrong with them like if the guy at the beginning of the movie has like tumors all over his body like they're able to be cured by it so they're exploring this land uh you know trying to understand it um when and they have their daughter with them and they both start exploring a cave but due to um due to their daughter screaming for their her mom there's a cave and leading both of them to die which is treated as a very positive thing in this movie <laughs> Um, the, the, yeah, like, Sheena does not mourn her parents at all. She does not, she seems pretty indifferent to the fact that they're dead. And then, all, like, the tribe that lives there are all celebrating that this just happened. And it's not like the movie built the two parents up as bad people or anything, you know? <laughs> they were yeah. just, they were, they wanted, the, the worst thing that they did is they wanted to take a little bit of dirt back because it's healing people and it could save lives. So, yeah, they had to go, of course. So we cut to many years later where Sheena's now an adult. She's able to like communicate with the animals and summon them. Um, she that we also have the story involving um, a king who is murdered, the king of this land who is murdered by uh, his his own brother, and he's conspiring with his uh, the king's fiance because they want to take over this land and do greedy things with it for their own selfish gain. Uh, meanwhile, we also have these two news reporters, um, not even really reporters, their camera operator. Um, they they, they want to get a story on this place and they get footage of the king being murdered um, and the king's brother and fiance both try to frame the person, the woman who's raised Sheena her whole life. Uh, so they want to get an interview of Sheena, but the, uh, I mean, the woman that they just locked up and they're going to execute for the murder of the king but then Sheena comes in and breaks her free, and that's how the c camera crew, like, gets their eyes on Sheena, and then they want to go after her instead. And, yeah, you from here on out, it's it's just a story that you've seen a bunch of times. You know, there's evil people trying to do something greedy. There's a character who, at first, is selfish, but then becomes be a better person as the movie goes on. And then there's the uh, nature lady, Sheena. Matt, what did you think of this movie? <laughs> This is fucking Dances with Wolves, like, six years before Dances with Wolves. I haven't seen that movie. I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie is certainly interesting. I think there is a lot that it does really well. There's a lot of, like, really funny scenes in this movie. Some of them deliberately so, some of them less deliberately so. But there's also a lot of, like, boring scenes in this movie. <laughs> Right. So it's a pretty mixed bag overall. Right. Like good stuff, funny, bad stuff, a lot of boring. Um, I think that it's another movie that, like, very much like Tarzan, it kind of loses itself a bit during the second half. Because it's the second half is a big action. It becomes an action movie, and it's like, it's not horribly done or anything, but it's just like, 
I don't know. I'm so uninvested in these characters. And it's not like they're doing anything mind blowing with the action. It's, you know, it's competent. But um, so it's not really winning me over with its visuals. And it's not winning me over with the story at that point. It feels like, yeah, it kind of just feels like it's coming to a halt. It, um, it feels weirdly violent in parts for how cartoony the the first half is. Monkeys get shot at like quite a few times in this. <laughs> <laughs> they'll shoot up at a tree and like one well, like they'll start running away screaming. <laughs> I think the film had pretty decent composition though throughout a lot of it. Like the opening scene where they like have their first ritual, like where the guy is healed and they start catching things on fire. There's like a really cool shot in that opening scene that they like stay on for a while of like just fire being set up, a group of people come in and start doing like a dance around it. They lift him out of the sand, like I thought that was a neat shot. I think that there's a, I think the cave in scene was shot really well. There, there's some nice, there is some nice uh, cinematography in this. And I think that the characters have more personality in this one than the last one. Uh, most of the characters have at least a little bit going for them. Like I'm, I'm going to say this right off the bat that, uh, Tanya Roberts was better than Bo Derek, not by a lot, but she is, I feel, I, I don't know, there's... I think part of it is the necessity to play, like, the jungle bimbo, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, the the character is not very deep or complex, so... she and, and, I mean, you could certainly play it more interesting than this. You could certainly give it a little more effort than this. But, uh... I, I think at least part of her problem is... There's not a lot to her character. There really isn't. It's kind of like a fish out of water, t- like character. Not even really fish out of water, just like because she's not the fish out of water, but she is like experiencing things that she never has before, just by interacting with uh, Ted Wass's character. He definitely has more personality than Tarzan did. I don't think he was a great character. I don't think she was a great character. His friend, that's a camera operator, like. <laughs> A little better, I'd say. Not great, but he's kind of like just the comic relief character, but... Although he fucks off at one point in the movie and then doesn't show up for a really long time again. Like, I kept expecting him to show back up and then he really doesn't until the end then. Um, Like, midway through the movie, he's like out of there. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot where I was going with this, sorry. (laughs) But I feel like the, as a whole, like... I don't know, the characters have more personality than the other one not uh, it wasn't always good like i don't think tanya roberts did a good job in this i think it's a very like i think it's a very bad character i think it's not like a great performance but it's a lot more memorable than uh bo derrick yes no yeah i i will say this movie feels a lot more awkwardly horny <laughs> mm-hmm like, like uh, tarzan the ape man is very bold with its horniness this one kind of feels weird about it this movie's rated PG, and they show, like, all of Tanya Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> like, we are talking full nudity. Full frontal nudity. That is not the only nudity in the film. You, you also see um the, the king's wife's butt in a scene. Mm-hmm. Eh, Hades. Uh, the nudity is a little bit weird, because of how long it's on screen, you would think they'd go for the R.A.M. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Like, like, Airplane has boobs in it. But it's like, first off, it's a joke. It's played for laughs, and it's boobs pop on screen for like two seconds and then jump off screen. Yeah. That's the entire joke. It, I don't think it's a particularly clever joke. It's one of the ones that doesn't quite land in that film. But it's like, okay, I get why this is PG. I, I get why in the 80s it was okay to do that in a PG movie. But uh, uh, this movie, it feels a lot more sexual. I Mitzi was commenting on this as we watched it. And um, I'll say this. this. This is what Mitzi specifically said, but this is just going off of what they said. It is... I feel like the first movie was going, and this is also kind of going off what you just said. I feel like the first movie that we talked about Tarzan was a little bit more honest about what it was. <laughs> yeah. Or this, Cause you're saying it's like they're uncomfortable with it. I agree. It feels like they want it to be like a real romance, but also not at the same time. Cause it's pretty, it's a pretty shallow movie with like this main character. 
but they're trying to pretend it's not. Like, they're trying to pretend, no, they really like each other. No, they have this really good romance with each other. And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to act like you can't, like, there's no reality where you can't do both. Like, have a lot of sex appeal and make the characters genuine. But you got to write them better than this. Crazy that the members of the Zamboni tribe all spoke English. <laughs> Yeah, I was waiting for you to mention that. <laughs> yeah, I just... And and I feel like we have to mention, like, at the beginning, they have her, like, as a baby, and she's, like, not wearing a shirt as a baby. But, like, okay, fine. Sometimes naked babies show up in movies. That's normal. But then they show her, like, age six or seven? Yeah. And she, she she's topless, and I'm like, oh, God, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. That's just a little too old for me to be okay with that. Yeah. I, I felt the same way watching that. That was a little <laughs> weird. Because, like, again, yeah, I agree. If it's, like, a baby, then it's, like, I mean, yeah, most babies do just wear a diaper, you know? Um, yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty normal. It's not, I don't, I'm not going to really bat an eye at that, but y yeah, there's like a point where you don't want to show that. <laughs> and that yes. was definitely like the, to me, that was clearly that point, especially with the type of character that's like, I know that they're not doing yeah, it in that yeah. scene. They're not doing it in that scene to be fair. Um, but you, what she grows into, like, it's a sex icon, so it is weird that they did that. Yeah, no, uh, if, if this were, like, if this character, like, stayed a kid the whole time, I, I might be a little more okay with it, but, no, you, gr you make her an adult, and you make her, like, a very sexual adult, a very hot, sexy adult. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's a very brief part of the movie. But it, it is. is it is weird. It's weird that they did that. Um, I don't think that anyone would do that today. No, no, not at all. Unless you're cuties. <laughs> Maybe cuties didn't even do that. I didn't see that movie. I <laughs> I am not I am not out in myself as someone who saw cuties. <laughs> I I I wonder how sincere those claims are. Oh. Like I'm I'm not saying. I'm not saying Cuties isn't, like, awful, but, like, I I have heard the director was, like, doing it with some intent, was doing it in, like, a, hey, this is a bad thing kind of way. What I've heard is that the movie is absolutely critical of it, but it's still doing it. Like, it would be, maybe it'd be different if it was an animated movie, or maybe it would be different if they, like, were able to comment on that with, like, out shoot it. Like, what I've heard from other people is that they are criticizing it, but they also did actually film inappropriate scenes of children. So that's where people are upset with it. Like, there's people who hate it that agree with the message, but they're just like, you don't film that. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I, I've seen very few people defend it. I have to imagine it's pretty bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll take your word for it. In, in the moment, I am not going to cast judgment on it without having seen it, but... Fair enough. If, if, if it's, if it's, like, what you're saying makes sense to me, I believe that that is true. Yeah, I'm just not, I, I, I fair enough to, not, maybe I shouldn't talk about a movie I haven't seen, but it's also just like, I'm not gonna watch Cuties. I'm, I'm passing on that one. I've heard enough stuff about it, like, where I really don't want to. I also don't want to be the person who defends <laughs> Cuties. <laughs> uh i think i would watch a review of cuties and and sort of uh gauge my thoughts from there like i would want to see clips from the film before i committed to watching the whole thing mm -hmm. like how bad is it if this is gonna be like real weird maybe i i don't want to watch that uh-huh um, without seeing, without saying it, I will say that uh, perhaps the director had good intentions but fucked up. But, but that's that's as far as I'll go <laughs> without seeing it. Yeah, fair enough. Give him the benefit of the doubt since we haven't seen it. <laughs> that was a huge derailment. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what else happens in this movie? <sighs> <sighs> Fucking. We could. 
There's fun scenes. I like the scene where they break the one woman out of jail. Oh, yeah. I like the way they use animals in this one. There's, like, a lot of real animals in this. Yeah. Never in Tarzan 2, but I, I'm a little more impressed with it in this movie. I think they do a lot more with their animals in this. The animals are trained, and they're interacting with the humans a lot. The scene with the lions just chilling on the guy's car, like, that that was, like... I, I was watching, I was like, that would have been a fun scene to be there for. That's cool. That's cool that these lions are just fucking chilling with them. Like, they're grabbing onto them, but they're not, like, fucking murdering them. You know, that's that's neat. The prison break scene was really cool, because they, they, they do actually have an elephant running through this building. They have the... Fu- they're like, I love how she has, like, her team, too. There's, like, the two monkeys that, like, they just take out a guard <laughs> and get the keys. Like, it's just... It's just, like, she has her own little team. It's like they orchestrated this. And it shows, like, it's a good, like, contrast, because the last scene you see her, uh... She, like communicates with a hedgehog when she's a kid uh and they, they say oh you're only gonna get better and then the first scene you see of her like communicating with animals as an adult is just like this like well planned out prison escape although the only reason it worked is because there was like zero security for this place but <laughs> but still it was fun it was a yeah, fun there, scene there were there were some armed guards but uh then you know the news reporter guy like sucker punched one of them there was no one outside at the very least well, there was the dude he sucker punched. Was he one outside? Guy. Okay. Yeah, he was, there was outside. There was one guy there was outside. A, there was a guy outside. There was two guys inside that the monkeys took care of. It, it does feel pretty low security. <laughs> Especially for someone who just assassinated your king. <laughs> At the same time, you know, it was... The, the, she did bring, like, big animals i i feel like it's reasonable to break someone out of jail with all that now without any of them dying okay that's kind of ridiculous but i don't know it, like i said it's it's a very cartoony movie for most of it oh yeah there's one scene that was really unintentionally funny to me because it was clearly supposed to be a sad scene where she's basically begging her you know adoptive mother not to go like she can't lose her because she's dying but the animals are already digging her grave as this is happening. Like, you want to maybe wait a minute before you start doing that? <laughs> like, the grave's almost fully dug. That's what they were doing, right? Am I, like, remembering that scene wrong? They were digging her grave in that scene. Yeah, no, no, that that was happening. <laughs> that, 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 that could be in a fucking parody. Like, if it wasn't for how serious tone the scene was, you would assume that was supposed to be funny. Would you like to talk about the, the the people in this film? Sure. Um, uh, I mean, we, we've talked about Tanya Roberts, I think. Yeah. She, she feels well covered. Um, Ted Wass, Vic Casey, <sighs> yeah, the, te- uh, the reporter. He was whatever. Like, it wasn't, like, terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's the thing. He's, like, such a... He, you know, he's like the the guy here for the story, and ooh, he's he's fine, like the sexy Tarzan lady now. I don't know why he didn't just stay at the end. They didn't really give him a reason to want to go back. Uh, yeah, I mean, like it, it kind of feels like he's like, oh, I'm gonna go back with like all this film and all this like healing dirt, and I'm gonna make things right. But like, uh, he could have just sent it with like the cameraman. That's that's true. Maybe they didn't trust the cameraman because he's a comic relief character and he was well aware of that. Yeah. Um, you know, like not it felt like he was trying. Like he wasn't like he was oh, yeah. just yeah, I think he was just whatever, you know. He wasn't bad, he wasn't good. Um it wasn't a maybe with like a better script, I would have liked him. Yeah. Um Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. I, I, I agree. He he did he did fine, you know. What do you make of the uh, the comic relief character Donovan Scott as Fletcher? <sighs> he felt like he was trying his heart out, but it just felt like, you know, it, I wasn't laughing necessarily. Uh, it felt very awkward most of the time for me. But I, it, I, I do think he was given. I, he felt like someone who was trying. He was like given like a really over the top cartoonish performance. Um, and maybe some people enjoy that. Uh, and maybe some people didn't. But I didn't necessarily get a lot of laughs out of him. But kudos for 
your effort. I feel like I've seen this guy in other things before. This is a. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look it up. You go ahead. What do you think of him? Uh, he sure is in the movie. Yeah. I thought it was weird that he, like I said, he fucked off. Because he's like a pretty big part of it for the first half. And there's a scene where he's debating on whether he wants to like help his friend or go back. And you... He, it, yes, it is him! It is him! The fucking Santa Claus in the mall for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The one that Charlie fucking like almost murders. That's him. <laughs> I recognize the face. That's like, do you you know what episode I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. That's the fucking yes. that's the fucking mall Santa that Charlie like. <laughs> Charlie's mouth is covered in blood as like he's being like dragged away by Mac. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I knew I recognized him. That's what it is. So he's really funny in that scene. Um, yeah, I, I but like what I was saying though is he like kind of just. There's like a, like he he's gonna get t- taken where he needs to by like one of the people in his friend's village. Who the friend character was a very underutilized character of the movie. They just kind of introduced him at a point. Said, "Oh, you're a person that we've been working with the whole time." Oh, here he is in another scene. Okay, he's done. Um, like he doesn't have a proper introduction and he doesn't have a proper cl- closing. You know, um, he's just kind of there for a scene. Yeah, but um, but yeah, but then like the but then again like uh he like it's clear that him and this other guy are about to travel off to go find his friend, and then just an hour passes without anything happening with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it feels like his scenes should have been better paced. Yeah, I I think we see. I don't want to see more of him necessarily. I just think they should have uh appeared more sporadically throughout the film. Right. Because he has, like, four, like, three or four scenes once he separates from Vic. So why didn't they just kind of split those up a little better? They just yeah. kind of, like, they keep cutting back to him, like, really quickly, and then they have, like, they ran out of footage for him. Um, and he doesn't show up again until the end, then. Yeah, no, and it, it, sh- it should have been more spaced out than that. I, he's got, like, a moment or two I think are kind of funny. I like, uh, I like when he's, he's gambling with those guys and the guy keeps making up, like, oh, this is the Ugandan straight. <laughs> that beats a full house. That was funny. It was fucking with him. France Zabda as Countess Zanda, I think that's the one who's looking after Sheena growing up. No, 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 no. That's the president's wife. Oh, wait. So Shaman... Shaman is the prince... What the fuck? Wait, what was yeah, name? No, uh, is that her? Uh, Eliz- princess Elizabeth of Toro is the... Like, that's the actress's name? Yes, Princess Elizabeth of Toro. So, okay, I, I saw... I was seeing that as, like, the character name. That's why I thought she was the fucking... Fiance. Okay, that's I. I didn't know that was a. Uh, okay, that's an interesting name. Um, uh, she she was like a, a Ugandan princess. <laughs> all right. Um, like uh, actually for real. Okay, interesting. Um, and they got her in this. I mean, I thought she was fine. Um, the old person like they, they gave her like makeup to look older at a point, and I don't think that makeup was done very well. It wasn't the worst old person makeup I've ever seen, but it just kind of looked like they. Tried to make the skin look a little bit, like, I don't know, wrinkly. But it it wasn't very convincing to me. It just kind of looked like they put, like, a bunch of stuff over her face, which they did. Um, but uh, the perform- performance-wise, you know, she's kind of given, like, a really over-the-top, like, oh, you're going to be, like, one with nature. You're going to be, you're the chosen one kind of character. But um, she did it fine. No, I, I, I think... Uh... I think it's a very authentic character, weirdly enough, for for the places this movie goes. Yeah. That character in particular felt very authentic. Yeah. Um, I think, honest to God, everybody in this movie is better than everybody in the other movie, with the exception of Richard Harris. And I'd say some of these people might be better than Richard Harris. I'm not sure about that. Um, uh... I don't think anyone really, like, stands out the way Richard Harris stands out. Yeah, you're probably but, uh, right. But he's, he's also got a much duller backdrop to stand out in front of. Mm-hmm. 
you know, we'll give we'll give the best actor for this like episode of Hall of Victories to Richard Harris. Not that we've done that yep, in other episodes, but <laughs> that's that's an award. Give yeah. him, give him the award that we always give out. Congrats, <laughs> Richard Harris. We should we should start doing that. Who's like the sh- who's the shining star every episode? We should start doing that. <laughs> Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. Every week. <laughs> Rob Schneider probably was the one who won his own episode. <laughs> who else would have won it? No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I know who would have won it. What Adam fuck? Sandler? No, Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald, oh yeah. Yeah. Maybe, well, I, don't, I don't think we need to award that every episode, but maybe we give them the Shining Star Award if they're, like, the only consistently good thing. Yeah. There's, uh, like, Nicholas in the Care Bears movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the Shining Star Award. Every single character, uh, both human and animal, in Marmaduke. No, the song, that's what I like about you in Marmaduke. <laughs> We're off topic. This episode uh, yeah, especially. The, the, the other actors in, uh, in, in Sheena are fine. No one was, like, terrible in this. Sheena was the worst part. Yeah. I think Tanya Roberts was better than Bo Derek. I still think she did a pretty poor job. I agree. I agree. I think she did better than Bo Derek because it was a little bit more memorable than Bo Derek. Bo Derek, like, it's just... I I feel like she's, like, being over the top in this. I think Tanya Roberts is, like, being, like... She's trying to sound really, like, whimsical in a lot of her scenes. You know, it, it doesn't work. Um, and maybe she's not even trying to sound whimsical. Maybe she's just trying to sound sexy. But um, I think she's trying to sound dumb, right? Dumb. She doesn't know how the world works. What is this strange mechanical horse? Yeah, you know, that type of thing. I don't know if she's trying to sound dumb though. She might be like trying to pull it off in like a cute way. I think she comes off sounding dumb. Perhaps, perhaps um, you're right. But, like, because, like, yeah, there is, like, fish-out-of-water stories, and a lot of the time they're done in a similar way, honestly, where the other character just end up sounding like a fucking moron. But, but yeah, like, it's just, like, I don't know. It, it, it's weird. Yeah, uh, no, her, her delivery is off. Trevor Thomas is kind of, like, the main villain of this. He was, like... Not I, I feel like there was potential for him to be a great villain, but they just don't focus on him a lot. Um, yeah, I here's the thing. Like, I've seen this movie before, and I totally forgot this, like, Prince's brother who's an American football player that, like, plots to murder his brother to take the throne. And it's like... I On the one hand, it, like, gets the whole thing moving. On the other hand, it's like... It's got nothing to do with, like, the main character. Yeah. The main story. I forgot to mention the football player part when I was giving my synopsis. Because, yeah, that was weird. That feels like, we, we like, last episode we talked, no, we didn't, uh, we, this wasn't a Hall of Victories. This was your other show. But we talked about that, like, movie with, the, like, the bootleg Batman villain. Um, Jesus will show you the way. Is that what it was called? Yes, Jesus shows you the way to the highway. That seems like you could have that kind of character. Like, he's the pr- uh, the jealous brother who murders his brother, the king, but he's also a football player. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what it feels like. It feels like a character who'd be in like that. No, it's, it's such a weird thing because it's like, <laughs> here's, here's the black man trying to rule Africa, and it's some, like... American dude who's only in it for the money and then you have the the glorious white woman who comes out of the jungle to save the African people <laughs> it's like hold up hold up yeah I, I I I had I had the same feel without the right words to put it in when I was watching that <laughs> I think you summed it up pretty well they made they made him like very American this is not like some, you know, a Nigerian warlord prince who's killing his father. This is an American football player. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't really think of anyone else in the cast that's worth bringing up. No. I don't think we have any repeaters this time. 
But a lot of the people in these movies definitely feel like they weren't in, like there's a couple of actors who have appeared in other stuff, but a lot of these people feel like just people who were like in these specific movies and not much else. Yeah, no, a lot of the actors in this have pretty small filmographies. I mean, like Clifton Jones, I feel like I've seen in other stuff, but I haven't. He's like barely in anything. Yeah, he does look a little familiar. Well, he was a voice. In, I, I, this wouldn't really count because it's animated, but he was in Watership Down. I like that movie. I need to watch that movie. Recommend that for movie night. Yeah, maybe eventually. It's a good movie. It's like kind of like the. I think the its biggest draw is that it's like kind of fucked up and gory, and it's also marketed as a kids' movie. But I also don't think that it's like a sausage party where it's like, oh, look at us. Like, it's kind of just a pretty genuine story about a bunch of animals trying to survive. And it's honest about that. <laughs> it's honest about how horrible it would be to be a little rabbit. Anyways, anything else to say about these or should we get to vote on? Um, we should maybe mention that Sheena was based on a comic. I didn't know that. That also had... It had an old serial back in the day, and then it was, like, rebooted into a TV show in 2000. Huh. I don't know how this interpretation stacks up against the others. I'm only familiar with this film. Yeah. All right, uh, sure, we'll take it to the voting round. Why not? Um, Michael, I'll let you vote first. It's a very obvious uh, Sheena for me. Like, Sheena's got a lot of problems, but there is some good comp shot compositions and really, like, nice camera work in the movie. Uh, most of oh, the yeah. actors are better than the ones in Sheen, uh, in Tarzan. Really, it was not a poorly made movie, really. Like, the, uh, you know, most of the acting's better, the story's a little bit more interesting. I think very much like Tarzan, the second half is less interesting than the first half. Like, there, there's a lot of movies that put a lot of their, like, folk, like, their, their climax, the last act of the movie, into the action... And it, if you don't have great characters or you don't have, like, really impressive stuff to show off, that's going to be a really boring way to end your movie. Like, Mac and Me stayed really entertaining because instead of going for, like, a big action set piece, just kept taking the characters in different places <laughs> until it did something. Like, it got more and more ridiculous. You know, that's what's so good about Mac and Me. I know it's a weird movie to compare to this, but in terms of just, like, a bad movie that stayed entertaining. It just kept like throwing shit that got weirder and weirder about it, which kept it entertaining where this is just like kind of just stands still for a while. You know, you're watching. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be the big climax of the movie, but I don't care about anything happening and nothing's changing. Really. It's just a bad good guys fight the bad guys. And you know, the good guys are going to win. So if you're not really show, if I don't care about these characters and you're not showcasing any like, like over the top action, like above and beyond, why should I care about this? And that's how I felt about the end of this movie. But still, as a whole, much better than Tarzan. Yeah. I I said last episode, I think I know which one of these is going to win. And uh, yeah, no, I, I think Sheena is the vastly more interesting movie. I think both are like on the duller side. I, I think this is a weaker matchup, both in terms of like these movies are kind of boring and in terms of like... I don't know, I don't think this is one people are going to be very interested in. <laughs> but, I mean... Good to have the variety there. Yeah, no, I, I think there is something to it. I, I, I think, you know, as it happened, there were two movies in the 80s about sexy Tarzans, and neither of them were particularly good. Um, weirdly, the audience is against us on this one. It's 76% for Tarzan the Ape Man against Sheena's 24%. My guess is that's popularity, and also, like, not a lot of people voted. This one has, like, a lot less votes than usual. Well, yeah, I was gonna ask, is Sheena, like, infamous? Because I could guess that Tarzan is just not, like, well-known. Because, like, if you put two bad movies on the screen and one of them is more well-known than the other, the more well-known one might just, like, lose, because people are like, oh, uh, I I'm voting against it. It's not a vote for the other movie, it's a vote against this movie. I, I think Tarzan the Ape Man probably is the more popular of these two. Oh, okay. These, I mean, I, uh, Tarzan the Ape Man is on Wikipedia's list of films considered to be the worst, and Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, is in the official Razzie movie guide, so, uh, the, these are two movies that have made their way onto, like, lists of bad movies, lists of, like, famously bad movies. Uh, here, here's the thing, like, uh, Sheena, 
it's not a good movie, but like I, with all the shit that comes out, I have a very hard time believing it's one of the worst of the year it came out. Like I have a very hard time believing that. Uh, Tarzan absolutely can believe it. I absolutely can believe that's one of the worst fucking things that came out that year because that movie sucked. I hate. I hated that. That uh, where? Let me look where it is on my list. Actually, um, let me pull that up real quick because I put it like really fucking low. It's not joysticks or um avatar infuriating for me but it's like not far off it, it could be a third to last let me check um yeah i i actually have it pretty low too i've got it in my bottom 10 let me let me see where i put it because i think sheen is like number 20 um yeah it is uh which is you know kind of right in the middle yeah it's it's right above the animal so it's it's like f- like four f- like four from last which honestly, I might have to reconsider that because the animal might have been more enjoyable than that. I don't remember. The animal was forgettable. It doesn't break my bottom five, but only barely. It, it's number. Well, wait, no, not even. Num- no, yeah, it's number six. And as always, my letterbox score goes off of personal enjoyment. Yes, it's a better made movie than the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree oh, is yeah. shorter, and oh, it yeah. makes me laugh. So the Christmas tree is higher up, but the Christmas tree is like wor- more poorly made than the Last Airbender. You know, like. Oh yeah, no. This is this is like which one of these are like the fun movies? Which would we rather watch again? I'd rather watch Rhapsody Street Kids than Tarzan the Ape Man. Yeah. Book of Henry is still number one. Book of Henry hilarious, although <laughs> maybe we should just Sheena wins. Yes. <laughs> Hooray. This might be the most off topic we've gotten in a single episode of the show so far, but you know what? We'll do better next uh, time. Probably not by much. <laughs> like, you might be right, but it, it, like, only barely, because we do get off topic a lot. Doesn't that make it more interesting, though? Like, the conversation can kind of go oh, in yeah. a different direction? Oh, yeah. No, I, I like talking about these other random things in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next month, this this was, like... You know, two movies that aren't, like, as popular. Next month, we're gonna do some, like, infamous movies. We're gonna do titles people know. It's our Pride Month special, (laughs) so we are having the beautiful and wonderful Mitzi on to join us. And we will be talking about... This one, uh, it's sort of a, a generational thing. An old versus new, if you will. We are talking about Edward D. Wood Jr.'s Glenn or Glinda versus Sam Mirovich's Ben and Arthur. I know Ben and Arthur. I don't know the other one. <laughs> I know Ben and Arthur because of Sardonic has. <laughs> well, uh, the good news for you, Michael, is ahead of that, uh, we're going to uh, have a hollow victories out of the ring about Tim Burton's Ed Wood. The oh. biopic about the director of Glen or Glinda. Oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. It's cool that it's cool that that movie is made by Ed Wood, and it's cool that I'm finally going to watch that because I've been wanting to watch that for a long time. Nice. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks um, for giving me an excuse. <laughs> yeah, this one will be like much more fun. These are both very funny movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right. Anything else to add, Michael? Uh, no. All right. Well, uh, then for my co-host, Michael Shadackle, I am Matt Presents. I will see you in the next one. Peace.